Hello everyone! So finally, after 8 long weeks of waiting, we got our DLC quest and new equipment. And this new update included our 10 new quests, 9 new armor sets, and 2 new weapon sets. I'm gonna make a series of videos throughout this week showing all the armor sets, all the new quests, and the new weapons. I'm gonna show you guys how to get S in each quest, what blue material each of these quests give, and what armor or weapon you combine with this material. If you're wondering what this fly new set I have on is, it's the Salil set with the Ashura scarf. This is new equipment that just came out with the DLC and I'll show you guys what you need to do to get this new equipment and what class it's good for. As far as the Salil set, the quest I'm doing right now, Into the Abyss, is the quest needed to bind this piece of armor. Into the Abyss, without question, is my favorite new quest. This quest is tough. You know, you don't just go into this quest with random people and expect to just beat it. Um, you really need people that know what to do with each class, how to play each class, and kind of done this already a few times and know what to expect from the boss and the mobs and how to react to each situation and their teammates. In this video, I will be playing Mage. It's my new favorite class. Since the new patch came out with the guild DLC and the class updates, Mage has just become so overpowered. Not only do Mage sustain themselves now and the whole party, they also do a ton of damage. After the patch where the classes were balanced, Mage just do so much damage now. Even against non-elemental monsters, they do a huge amount of damage and they almost rival axe in DPS. The first thing you want to do when you start this quest is make sure you kill those mobs. Also know these mobs keep respawning and it's very important where you position yourself and where your team is positioned and we're gonna go over that later on in the video. Um, right here you see I run towards that corner right there. I found that to be a very good spot as a mage and because we have four other mages on my team, there's no point for me to support them all. As you notice here, because I'm here on this edge here, I'm not getting any splash damage when my party is getting attacked. That way I don't have to fade or angel favor myself and I can just focus on DPS. So here the mob respawns again. And as you can see, because I was in that corner, they don't attack me right away. And it gives me a chance to kill the mob. Um, it's very good to have somebody arc here. It's very important. Having somebody with either a sword arc or a hammer, which is would be best, because it has so bash and a huge range, you could quickly draw the mob in and just take it out. So here I'm going back to my spot, casting Fate and Angel Favor on myself if I need them. When you have both Fate and Angel Favor on yourself and there's no mobs, you're just free to attack. Um, he also does a slow that really slows you down whenever he does that I cast haste on myself as you can see here even though we only have five people we're just so in control we're taking care of the mob as soon as they come out and we're just dealing a great deal of damage while sustaining our whole party when you have the black usurper staggered it's a very good time to run in refresh your party regenerate their mana buff make sure you have the favors on and you have haste on and when you're done with that, just head back to your spot and start dealing damage again. I play a lot of different games, from strategy games like StarCraft 2 on PC to like first person shooters, Call of Duty. Um, all these games, to be good at them, you have to be able to use the map. You have to be able to work with your team, know their strengths and weakness, and be able to work around that to make all of you play better. And this goes for like Y9 Chronicle and just all kinds of games. One of the reasons I picked this spot to stay at is that when the mobs first spawn, they don't seem to attack me while I'm here. Second reason is when my party's getting splashed, I don't get hit. This gives me time to do some damage, pull some aggro from the boss. That way when the boss decides to attack me, I mean my party could recover and heal themselves and buff themselves. And I could quickly recover myself because I'm a mage. And let's say for example my party got unlucky and that group over there got wiped out I could use Phoenix and just revive my whole party so these are all things you want to consider when you're first trying to complete a difficult quest like this one 
Watching this video, this quest may actually look easy, but believe me, it's not. I haven't gotten hit by this boss yet, but when he does hit you, and you don't have that favor on, you're gonna take 1200 damage, you're gonna die one hit. It's very easy to lose control in this fight. Once people start dying, you're gonna have to start reviving them, and you're not gonna be able to take out the mob as soon as they spawn, and the mob is gonna take away your favor, and you're gonna end up keep reviving people, and people are gonna keep dying, and it's just an endless cycle where you eventually fail this quest. Things that are crucial and can make this quest go smoothly are having mages and arts. Arts to take care of mobs, and mages to support and take care of themselves and stay alive. If you're watching this for the first time and you want to tell me congratulations on beating this tough fight, thank you. But this is another fight after that one. Um, he does have a second form. The second form is not any harder than the first form. It's not any easier either. Uh, what you want to do is same strategy. Take care of the mobs. Make sure you have favor on so you don't take any one hit KOs from him. And just continue to chip away his life till he's dead. I will also be uploading videos for all the other new quests showing you guys the fastest way to S them and what drops they give, what equipment you can make with these drops. I won't be doing commentary on those videos but I will be editing them because certain quests require people to take different paths. I'm going to show each path that each person can take to make the quest go as fast as possible. The other quests are not as challenging as this one. The only other one that's kind of challenging was Rival Survival 2. You notice here I make a mistake and I do magic boost right after I got debuffed and I die instantly. You can't make any mistakes in this quest or you're gonna die. Um, but Rival Survival was pretty difficult. I will be uploading a video for that to show you guys how I ran that quest. Maybe you'll find it helpful. Please go ahead and enjoy the rest of this video. I hope you found it very helpful. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you the armor set you can make with this quest. There's two pieces you definitely want to get if you're going mage. The two pieces from this set you want to make is the top and the pants. But be ready when you try to plus 20 because you need around 20 fire skulls and around 40 husks. So be ready for that.